Uh, also, another thing that I think is contributing to people like, you know, not jumping into the STR market is fast is the fact that uh, interest rates are so high right now, like at what, 7%? Yeah, seven, seven, seven to eight, depending on when you're watching, but yeah. Right, so I mean, imagine this. So you have <clears throat> occupancy levels um, dipping down industry ride back to 55%, and then you have interest rates up at 7%. So in the middle there, like it just it just makes sense for uh, supply to slow down in the short term rental market. Hey, welcome to Uncommon Estate of Mind, where we debate different ways to leverage your next investment to create time freedom, legacy impact and generational wealth. So you can live that uncommon life. But in order to do that, you must be uncommon. My name is Joey, a.k.a. Mr. J. Mays. Hey, what's good? It's A.D., also known as A.D. the Fly Realtor. Yep. So today I wanted to go ahead and produce you guys with a quick update um, on the STR market. Um, I was listening to STR Data Labs recently, which is, you know, completely uh, another podcast completely dedicated towards short term rentals. You guys should definitely give that a listen. Uh, the main guy on there is Jamie Lane. If you know anything about STRs, if you know anything about running the business of short-term rentals, you know that name because uh, he's great with uh, just forecasting the market, and you know he he loves you know using different data points to to uh, educate people about the short-term rental market. <clears throat> um, aside from that, he was talking um, not too long ago on one of the episodes about just the overall market as a whole. I, be, I believe it was the March update. But one thing really stuck out to me about that, and it was the fact that supply growth in the STR market, which is you know how quickly more short-term rentals are popping up on the market, has slowed down significantly um, you know, year to year. So supply growth is slowed down. It's around like 12%. Uh, in 2024, which is great for the STR market, um, mainly because if you already have a short term rental um, or short term rentals in the market right now and, you know, there's less supply, that means more people are booking your units and you don't have to compete as much. Right. And when you can compete more um, or sorry, when you're not competing as much you, and people, you know, have to book your places, you can then charge higher daily rates. And that's what's uh, kind of been, you know, happening in the market right now. Also, in the United States, currently, um, uh, occupancy has went up by 2%, uh, which is great, meaning more, you know, that means, you know, more people are booking short-term rentals in the U.S. opposed to overseas because uh, overseas, one thing I will say is overseas market when it comes to short-term rentals has recovered way quick, way more quickly than the United States market. There's a lot more people traveling out of the United States than there are people traveling inside of the United States and we're coming to the United States. And that's kind of like hindered the STR market, at least for US uh, based um, host. And uh, the fact that that's kind of starting to slowly rise back up again um, is a huge win for a uh, short term rental host. So is there are there any other indicators like that would let us know why uh more there like more hosts are getting booked is it, are there for example like are there more people who maybe they're not new operators but maybe they're already operators and they're just leaving the business altogether there's definitely but, there's definitely people doing that and uh, that comes like circles back to what i talked about not too long ago about the actual average industry rate of occupancy being around 55 percent, right <laughs> so when you know, people got in in that sweet spot when occupancy levels were much higher than that. Now that they've dropped back down, they've realized, you know, in specific markets like, oh, maybe during, you know, 2021 to 2022, these specific markets were they weren't really popular destinations or they weren't really great destinations to have an STR, but they were going to do well anyways. Right. Now that the market is, you know, hitting that correction, now that you're starting to see the true occupancy level of this market, people are exiting. Uh, also, another thing that I think is contributing to people like, you know, not jumping into the STR market as fast 
is the fact that uh, interest rates are so high right now, like at what, 7%? Yeah, seven percent? Yeah, seven, seven, seven to eight, depending on when you're watching. But yeah, right. So I mean, imagine this. So you have <clears throat> occupancy levels um, dipping down, industry ride back to fifty five percent, and then you have interest rates up at seven percent. Right. So in the middle there, like it just it just makes sense for uh, supply to slow down yeah. in the short term rental market. You know that makes sense. Um. You know, for those of you who may not be aware, the reason why Joey mentioned the interest rates is because he's also talking about people uh, buying either vacation homes or second homes. Um, you know, they need loans to get those properties. So higher interest rates mean they're going to have to potentially pay higher amounts for a home that's not even their primary home. So those decisions like that are the kind of things that people think about. And it's definitely a barrier to people buying more and more property as opposed to when interest rates are lower. Yeah. So just to clear that up. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much the main, uh, you know, topic or the main uh, thing that I got from listening to that podcast. And it's it's one of those things that, you know, you have to kind of be in tune with. You have to be in tune with what, what you know, global uh, occupancy rates are, what the United States interest rates right, are, right. are or not not interest rates, but I was talking about occupancy rates. Mm -hmm. uh, United States occupancy rates are compared to, you know, the global occupancy rates and seeing these trends and understanding these trends in your market, or at least in the United States, and then breaking them down individually to your market, which they talked about quite a bit in the show. I don't want to go ahead and steal their thunder, but uh, you guys can check that show out. But I did want to give you that update, especially if you're still looking into get joining or getting into STRs. Yeah, that's one thing that's really cool about, like, you know, doing business or trying to, you know, run anything in general, where it's like you kind of have to have an air to the street all the time. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, at least have some kind of clue of what's going on. And more importantly, have an idea of how it's going to affect you and your business goals, your investing goals, whatever it may be. Uh, you know, you don't just want to be completely in the dark. You know, you at least want to know what questions you need to ask. So you can find out where you go from there. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Big time. Now, another thing that I'll add on that is the fact that, um, and I, I kind of touched on it before, but ADRs are also rising. And what ADRs is average daily rates. And that goes to, once again, having less uh, supply right. uh, in the market. You know, you have less supply in the market. You have more people looking to stay in short-term rentals. And they don't have as many options, so they have to go with you know yours or maybe somebody else down the road. Basic economics, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> right. So that's that's something that that's been great for short term rental hosts. We're starting to see what the SCR market is like outside of like any anomalies, um, which is extremely important for people who want to do this long term or want to get into this. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much my update for the day. That's cool. That's cool. You know, it's always good to get that STR update because, um, you know, the stuff I hear you say when you're talking about short term rentals, it kind of coincides with other stuff I know about the economy. So, you know what I mean? It's always cool to get a good like round scope of things, you know, like, yeah. oh, stock market, real estate, you know, the short term. Because, well, yeah, it all it, links up. everything links up. So it's always like interesting hearing how it's affecting or what the. Uh, outlook is for a different industry based on the same circumstances. Mm -hmm. It's it's one of those things. So the the higher or what I'll say is the more that you see international travel come back to the United States, uh, the better the market's going to be um, in the future. So that's one indicator that's for sure uh, we look at. Right, right. Okay, cool, cool. So before we head off, or is there anything else you'd like to drop on us in regards to the short term rental industry? Like anything new or anything to look out for or any current trends? Um, Nothing too much that I haven't already said. I mean, I, I will say this is it's, it's something that you definitely need to pay attention to because things can switch up pretty quickly. Well, one thing that, you know what, I, now that I think about it, <clears throat> regulations, and we talked about it a little bit before, but regulations are tightening up and it's getting harder to, to uh, do arbitrage um, in specific areas in the U.S. So like, um, the arbitrage model in specific cities. I know LA is out has been, and I know Orange County just recently. Orange County just recently banned uh, um, short term rentals for stays under thirty days, 
which is huge because I know a few operators out there, especially I know my mentors, you know, they started units out there and, you know, regulations have changed to a point where now they either have to shut down shop or they can only do 30 days or longer. <clears throat> so, and um, that's, you know, that's another reason that possibly uh, supply growth has, has slowed down as well. Maybe the fact that right. regulations have started Tighter restriction. to tighten up. Right, right. Okay, cool, cool. And then, you know what, well, one last question. So uh, with summer getting ready to come around, it's, I mean, we're pretty much in summer already. Yeah, we are. Um, is the, the short-term rental industry expecting, you know, so a slight uptick, like, you know, oh, lower uptick? Always. Yeah, this is around the high season. I mean, for short-term rentals, I mean, imagine, like, you know, all the kids are about to be out of school. Right, They're right. going to be ready to travel and get out of here and, and, and go, you know, to their vacation destinations. So we're already in... We're entering the high season for short-term rentals right now. Yeah, I would imagine like bookings are starting to happen. Bookings are are are, yeah. speeding, are, are they're coming faster, uh, and they uh, you know they're staying they're they're booking. Um, well, usually for times like now, if depending on the area you're in, people will book ahead for to to go ahead and you know take their vacations now. But even still, like right, those last later eight summer. bookings, like yeah. Yeah, last minute bookings or whatnot, they come in. They come in a lot hotter during this time than they would, you know, during like, I don't know, January or February. Mm -hmm. so, got you, got you. All right. Cool. <clears throat> um, so that's pretty much my short term rental update. Um, be for the day. Uh, just be in the know. You know, like this is something that we touch on a lot. Just always have a feel of what's going on, especially as it pertains to your industry and whatever your uh, investing business or entrepreneurial goals are. So uh, be in the know. Be in the know, be you, and be uncommon. All right, that's a wrap. Stay up.